What's happening, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. It's always a pleasure to exchange with you. Thank you very much for choosing us once more. I appreciate you. You know that. I am Zach. I don't know who you are, but I'm sure we're going to like each other as we go. Okay, so this is your first time. Feel free to join us. There is a button here. I believe it's called subscribe. If it's not done yet, please subscribe so we can see each other every day. I'm sure we have a lot to share. Thank you very much. I'll see you from all over the place. Greetings. Tobela, South Africa, Dumela, Jevaleko, Basebonaba Nyavo, in Uganda, um, all over the place. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's going to take way too much time, but you know, I feel you. Wagwan, me boss, Jamaica. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, cover me under the blood. <laughs> Trinidad, Tobago, US, UK. I see you. Thank you very much. I see a lot of brothers following us from all over the place. From all over the world, from the diaspora, Africans, African Americans, Caribbeans, we are one people. So, fellas, I think there are some things we need to clarify, okay? The very important subject. I was going to YouTube, I saw some videos that were very intriguing, and I think there are many questions that people need to understand. We have many issues as black people, okay? Black people are not limited in America. I know in America, when you say black people, you're talking about African Americans. Africans themselves are black people too. So, we refer to Africans continents we are black people also we are the same people whatever the side of the history you want you want to put yourself and i know many people have been complaining about certain things you know there are many stories being going across about how africans perceive african americans and caribbeans and how african americans perceive african vice versa i just want to tell you that this is not true okay i don't know what you heard before I heard stories saying africans are not nice they perceive you as lazy yeah that's some of, some of the words i heard lazy, uh, disorientated, have no goals, no future, disorganized, entitled. You may have heard that somewhere. I just want you to know that not, not all Africans think that way. Okay. Maybe you heard one person, two, two people, or maybe, yeah, somebody very preeminent on the internet. Anybody can be big on the internet, first of all. First of all, anybody can have many followers. And because he's got thousands of followers, does not mean his word represents all Africans. Whatever his views are, does not represent my views or that of my team or anybody else. That's number one. We are one people. Now, there are many things that need to be put to the table because even though we are the same people, just remember we have been apart for the longest time ever. For any other people in the world, when people go apart, they slowly start bec becoming different. They embrace different values sometimes. They embrace different religions, different directions. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Look at Africa. In Africa, some areas are Muslim. Yeah, they're Muslim. How did they become Muslim? Because obviously there was an influence of the Arabs coming to Africa. Arabs took some slaves with them. People don't talk about that slavery. And those Africans became Muslim. You're talking about Africans in West Africa. You're talking about Africans in Tanzania. These people were subjected to a lot of power from Arabs. There's a lot of Arabic influence. They're Muslims. You see some other Africa where people are Christians. How did they become Christian? They were not born Christians, at least not the ones that were back in time. They were Africans. They became Christians after the influence of Europeans. When they came to Africa, they imposed Christianity. It was forced into people. Yes, people did not convert into Christianity because they wanted it. They were beaten up to become Christians. So the mentality or core values of some of the Africans that are Muslims and some that are Christian are not necessarily equal even though we perceive ourselves as african when you look at an african brother you as a caribbean or african-american or a uk black person and you see them different don't be surprised because time tends to push people away you know the more you progress the more you get soaked into the culture of the country you are in you tend to become different i mean many black people in england are literally english people in the way they have breakfast in the way they speak the way they perceive life because British is everything you've seen in your whole life. Maybe a little bit of Jamaica, but you've seen a lot of Britain. Even Jamaicans don't perceive you as full Jamaican because you've been to Britain for your whole life. So I just want to lay the basis for the differences you may see between us and you. Even though the core, at the core, we are the same people. Uh, precisely, I saw a few videos of African Americans and some Caribbeans as well. But I think it was more African Americans saying, oh, well, I'm leaving Africa because uh, these people are not honest. I'm being scammed all over the place. I went to Tanzania uh, and it was not nice at all. They give me Muzungu price. Muzungu price. Muzungu is a white person. And apparently, white people are subjected to different prices, expensive stuff. So it's become expensive for white people. 
when they want to purchase a thing. Let's say that cost uh, 10 shillings or 10,000 shillings. Let's just take 10,000 shillings. If normally it's cost 10,000 shillings, the Muzungu price will be 20,000 shillings. Okay? And many African Americans or many diasporians have been very disappointed with the fact that in many places in Africa, they felt like they were being scammed looking for identity, looking for papers, looking for, you know, services, trying to get transport, they're being scammed. They're being scammed when they're trying to get accommodation, the price goes up and it's very frustrating. Trust me, I completely understand how it feels. First of all, I'd like to say sorry on behalf of everybody who's been stressed, who's been frustrated in that situation. I would like to say sorry because I can understand from what grounds you expressing yourself from. And for many diasporians, when you come to Africa, you come with the idea of, I'm, co I'm going home, right? I'm going home. There are going to be people applauding me and screaming for me and being happy. You back home, welcome back. You know, all that stuff. And we all wish it was that way. And I know many of you had a rude awakening, maybe apart from people that went to Ghana in the year of the awakening, who were really, you know, accepted and applauded. Most of our people that have been out there, most of the diasporian, when you come to Africa, you come with the intentions of being home. Okay, you come with the idea of being accepted. Yes, you come with the idea of finally meeting people that will understand you, people that will comprehend you, people that will have acceptance. Because I see a lot of people excited when they come to Africa saying, well, I'm so happy seeing thousands of people looking just like me. I'm so happy. And yes, everybody wants to feel like they belong. And many of you have come to Africa feeling like you were looking to a place where you will belong. You will not have the fear of driving in your car and being stopped by the police. You will not have the fear of being discriminated in shopping centers or anything. Just to find, for many cases, being subjected to very similar situations, maybe apart from policemen and stuff like that. It's very sad. You know, it's very disappointing. I can completely understand that. But I want to give you a perspective that is different. Maybe this will help us understand. Me, as an African person, trust me, whenever I go to the next African country, I'm subjected to the same treatment as you. Meaning, when I get there and they see that I sound different, let's say we all speak English and they can hear that my English accent is different from their English accent because every country in Africa has their own English. If they're English speaking, they have predominantly their own English accent. Just like in America, you know, New York English accent is not necessarily LA English accent or Mississippi. It's different. Same for African nations. South African accent of English is different from Ugandan accent of English. Ugandan accent English is different from Nigerian accent English, you know, vice versa. So if I go to a country, let me name an example. If I go to Uganda, for instance, and I happen to speak to a taxi driver trying to get a ride to one spot to the other, uh, the price I'm going to get is definitely going to be different from the price any Ugandan person will or anybody that sounds Ugandan would get. So it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that you came from another continent and you are being perceived as a foreigner. I'm going to be perceived as a foreigner if I go to a country in Africa where they feel like I look different, I feel different, my presence is different, my accent is different. If I want to buy a piece of orange or I want to buy guava or banana, as soon as they look at my face and they see the way I look, the price goes up. Yes. And I know it's very sad because the bottom line is when you go to Europe, you want to buy a piece of bread in a shop or whatever market it is. If the piece of bread costs two euros, for the white person, the Italian person. It costs two euros for the Indian person, two euros for the black person, two euros for everybody. But it's very sad. The reality is when you come to an African continent, most of the times, this is what you're gonna be subject to. So you shouldn't be surprised when the price goes up. It's not necessarily because they hate you. It's not necessarily because they wanna steal from you. There are many reasons for that. I'll try to elaborate a few reasons why you feel that. Reason number one. Reason number one, Africans are very giving, okay? In Africa, we live in a system that's very sort of, it's unspoken, but it looks a little bit like a hierarchy core. It's a system where higher people are perceived higher in society compared to lower people. So that means people that perceive themselves lower than you will absolutely ask you for something. Apart from some places in Africa that are very rare, when somebody in Africa perceives that you live a much better life than they're most likely going to ask you. In many places in Africa, it's not because they're trying to scam you. It's not because they're trying to do anything from you. It's because naturally Africans back in time used to be giving. It was never a capitalistic system. So people were living 
with love, meaning there was not never, this is my things, it was our things. So whoever was doing great was not just doing great for himself. Whoever was doing good in life, whoever was doing great in whatever they were doing, was sharing with everybody else. So genetically, this is something we've kept, even though we have rebuked many things out of the culture in general. Listen, Africa is massive. There is no such thing as the African culture. It doesn't exist. Africa has 54 different countries. And each country, very slowly after colonization, had developed its own uh, 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 system, its own mindset, its own ways, even though we still kept many things that are very similar. You know, perhaps, uh, let me say, paying diaries. Diaries is when you go uh, marry a girl. In some places, they call it the bride prize. When you want to go marry a girl, you need to take money with you. You need to take gift to the family of the woman. In Africa, you cannot just get a woman and say, okay, come baby, let's go live together and make babies. You need to come honestly. You need to come and open doors. You need to bring your family, your uncles. You need to go ask for your hand officially. There's no such thing as me and my boyfriend live together. Yes, people do it, you know, in very funny, slippery ways. They will go and hide and do it. But officially, if it's a respectable family that has kept the culture, they, they cannot accept that. You need to come officially and ask for the hand of the girl. And you give whatever you have to give. Sometimes it's money, sometimes it's cows, you know, um, but you need to provide something. And it's not buying the woman. It's for the recognition of, of the work, the tremendous work the family has done with this lady, making her whoever she's become. And that gives value to the marriage. So we have many things in common. The first reason why people ask you is because in Africa, generally, people were used to live in community. It was sharing. It was the spirit of sharing. It was never because they wanted to take advantage of you. The second reason why people ask you. So you, you need to keep in mind that in Africa, they were never like, this is my food. That is your food. These things have come very recently. I can give you a very simple example. In Africa, back in time, people used to sit together and share in one plate. So the food was in one plate and everybody took from the plate. White people and Europeans brought the mentality of each one with its plate. Yes, you with your plate, you go, you serve yourself. That came with colonization. Before that, everybody ate in one plate. It was everybody's food. So you, you have a big place. Obviously, people were clean. You're going to wash your hands and you're going to eat. Focus on your side. The difference today is people take their own plate. They go to the big table. What do they do? They, when there's fish or there's meat, they're going to choose the biggest piece of meat for themselves and leave the little one for other people. But in time, it wasn't like that. Okay. So... That's one of the main reasons why Africans ask. They ask they not, not because they're special, not because you're American or because you're Caribbean. They ask me because I look good. They ask my friend because he looks like a standout, like he's standing strong. They will ask you because they're going through difficult time and they, they think you're doing better than them. It has nothing to do with begging. Obviously, I need to clarify. That culture very slowly has disappeared. The culture of eating together very slowly disappeared. Only very little uh, uh, pouches of Africa you will find today people eating together. Like if you go to Muslim countries, if you go to, uh, you know, West Africa, you will find people sitting on the ground and eating together in big plates because that was the way they were. And the good thing about that was when you sit down with your brothers to eat, even if you have issues with them, even if you're not getting along, by the time you sit with them to eat around the same plate, sharing the same food, you are forced to find a solution to whatever issue you have with this brother. There's no, uh, this is my stuff. Don't touch my things. It was our stuff. It was our child. The child was never one person's child. The child was the village's child. So everybody could reprimand the child. Don't do this. Don't touch that. Don't eat this without the parents getting upset or aggravated about it. That was Africa. Today, you can't do that anymore. Today, you can barely look at a child and go, oh, you're cute. But that was the norm. Whenever an African person saw another African child, they would go, oh, he's so cute. Today, people become very, you know. The other reason why people ask you, and maybe the price rises, is because Africa doesn't have the concept of Christmas and New Year's Eve, you know. During New Year's Eve, wherever you live, whether it's Europe, USA, prices of things most of the time go up. Have you ever tried to book a flight, you know, during New Year's? Of course, you know the price. It goes up, right? Uh, it's the same concept. Now, Africans' New Year's is not during Christmas and stuff. For many African New Year's and whatever that is, it's whenever they see somebody that's bigger than them. Oh, that's my opportunity to make some money. No, it's not, not going to hurt him because anyway, he's doing great in life. He's doing much better than me. They don't perceive it as hurting you. It doesn't come from the core of their heart. 
Because this happens to me as well. It's not just you. It happens to the Ugandan person who's doing great in Uganda. It happens to the Kenyan person who's doing good in Kenya, going to a you know a, a messed up neighborhood. It happens to anybody that comes from one African nation to the other. They're going to try to not scam you. They're going to try. The price is going to go up. Now, what you do is what you need to tell them. This is not the price. Okay, I know this is not the price. What is the real price? You will see them drop the price. It has nothing to do with morality. I know, if you look at it from a perspective of a white man, you say it, it, it's not moral. But from a perspective, you must remember we don't have the same story. We don't have the same history. I know I've been very passionate about this subject. When you come to Africa, I know you come wanting and expecting to be accepted, be understood. Don't forget that many years of separation have driven us apart. Now, it's our responsibility to be patient with one another. Understand that my brother right here is still my brother genetically. But the way he's gone, it's not the way I've gone. So I need to find him somewhere. Just remember, wherever you go in life, you're going to find good people and bad people. Now, don't get your judgment based on bad experiences you've had in the past. I went to America and let me tell you something. What I've learned from America. Saying what's up means different from one place to the other. Right? There are some places you say what's up. Some like, oh, what's up? Some place you go, you say what's up. And somebody goes, what's up? Right? So what's up could mean very different things. What's up, fam? <laughs> in some places in Africa, when you look at somebody in the eyes, they go like, hi. In some places in America, you look at somebody in the eyes, they say, what are you looking at? It's a matter of understanding and being patient. So once more, I want to tell you, I want to reiterate. For those of you that come in Africa, for those of you come trying to find yourself, I understand the passion you have and it is comprehensible. But when you come to Africa, number one, bring value, bring something positive. Bring something that's going to carry on with you. People are not waiting for you clapping hands and say, oh, he's back. Just, no, no. They, just like they don't wait for you in Detroit, they're not waiting for you like that. But they're going to accept you based on how you behave. I saw another video online where there was a person, yeah, a diasporan in Tanzania. He was working in the street of Tanzania and came out of a bus. He said, this bus is stinky. Just remember, this place is... People really smell. I don't know if they are deodorant in this place. There's, yeah, there's a video online about that. Now, if I were one of those people, I say these are, these Americans are. Who, who do they think they are? Do they perceive themselves superior to everybody else? Now I know this person's view doesn't reflect your view about Africans. He's just a stupid man that came and was lost, probably frustrated because he didn't find what he was looking for. It doesn't matter where you are in life. Things you're looking for don't come to your plate. You need to dig for them. You need to be patient. You need to find the right people to work with you. Even within your own community, not everybody's a good person. You know that. So find the people that reflect who you truly are. You're going to find them wherever you're looking for. They are there. And one more thing that's very important that you need to understand. Wherever you go in life, you need to learn to integrate yourself within the community. Wherever you go in life, you need to integrate yourself. Trust me, people are most likely to accept and like you when they see you trying to speak their language. Even if you're struggling, they're going like, oh, you're trying, oh. It's very easy to say people are xenophobic. It's very hard to see people are xenophobic when you're speaking their language and you're not doing anything wrong. Okay, hear me right. You're not doing anything wrong and you're trying to speak the language. They're most likely going to try to help you out because you're not doing anything wrong. When you go to a place and you think you know better, there are ways to express yourself. You can't say, oh, this is dirty. How do you live like animals? I'm like, come on. No, you don't do that. Even if you think you know better, there's loving way to express yourself. Okay, I see how you do it. Can, can, you, can we try it my way? Let me just show you my way. Maybe they're going to like it. It's never really about what you say. It's usually how you say it that matters. Okay, so understanding each other comes from you putting yourself in my shoes. Don't force me to get in your shoes before you try to get in my shoes because I'm not going to listen to you. If I feel like you're not listening to me, there's no reason for me to try to listen to you. 